Hey guys, Dan from YJ here and welcome to lesson 10 of our BB King player study. And we're coming to the end of our unit here, whereby we've been looking at the major and the minor pentatonic crossover and how to play them in all five positions. So in this lesson we're on position five, so we're way up here on the fretboard. Um, and I'm gonna again be showing you the two pentatonic shapes overlaying the cage chord and then how BB King might use that with a really cool lick. So pick up the guitars and let's get started. So if you've just joined us, don't forget that you can get all of the lesson write-ups, the interactive tab and the scale diagrams over on our website and we'll post the links in the video and in the description below. Also, please do like and subscribe to the video as well as leave us a comment below. It massively helps us spread the word about these courses. Finally, if you're on Instagram and want to share your progress by posting some videos of you playing these tracks, then please do tag us at Your Guitar Academy. We can't wait to see how you're getting on with them. Now for this particular position, we're now utilizing the last of the cage chord shapes, which is this one. Okay, so this is probably the, it's, it's not greatly used, but it, I think it's still valid. And if you do use it, you kind of got a little bit of a leg up on the competition, let's say. Uh, not that it's a competition in the guitar world, everyone be loving each other, uh, but. This is a really cool little chord to learn. Uh, you would probably realistically see this a lot on A. So rather than playing A7 like that, you'd see it maybe like that, like Stephen Ray Vaughan would do that. Um, but yeah, this gives us our, our positioning. And remember, BB King is not a guy that plays loads of chords, so we're not learning this for the chord's sake, we're learning this for a position sake, so that we can quickly find the pentatonics and the licks that we need in any key. So. There we have it, there's our chord. And the way I would find this actually is it's based on the G-shaped cage chord in major, okay? So the way I would just generally try to do this is um, either finding the root note on the G string, barring that position and adding the high flat seven, or from the root note on the E string, okay? So if you've got the root note on the E string, okay? You kind of go to the high, version of that, so obviously they're mirrored, the high one, dropping down two frets and popping the chord on there. Okay, so that's, there's a bunch of ways to find this particular chord. Uh, I think, let me add one more in there that I think I use a lot as well, which is if I know where this chord is, I just jump up to that chord there. So I basically take these two, okay, from the A shape, flatten them, and add my third finger or second finger or little finger, whatever feels comfortable at the time. Um, and I've got my chord. Okay, so it's simply first finger on the D, G and B string, and then second or third finger playing the uh, 13th fret on the high E string. That's the chord, okay? And with that, we've got our pentatonic shapes, okay? So what I would do here is I'd use the root note high up to help us here, okay? So we're, again, if we start with minor first, we're gonna be using minor box five. Okay, and then if we've got box five in minor, we go one up, so from box five, one up is box one, we kind of go in a big loop. So box one is in major, like this. So we've got, there's the chord, jump up to the root, that's the flat seven, we're gonna hit the root for minor, box five, and then major, box one. So this one is, is surprisingly common, um, so I would highly recommend getting this one learned. Okay, and it's those two shapes together. Again, if you're really unsure of these pentatonic shapes, I wouldn't recommend trying to cross them over straight away like this. Learn the five pentatonic shapes in a single key first. We've got loads of courses for that over on the website. Um, but when we are in a position to, to do this, the crossover must be based on that chord. It's gonna really help you find this as we go through it. Now, in terms of how BB King might use this position, here's the lick we're gonna be learning. Okay, 
So to be totally honest, we're scraping the barrel a little bit for BB King Licks in this position because it's not one of his favored places to play. Okay, so I've put something together which is similar um, and something that's gonna help you learn it. But I would say this position is much more commonly used by someone say like Eric Clapton, um, who quite often moves into that major pentatonic box one. Okay, but for now, you know, this is a really cool little lick to learn and will help you kind of complete this set of positions. So the way I'm doing it is I'm hitting the 12th fret on the G string, which is of course the root note. Then I'm gonna jump up, think minor pentatonic, shape five, and I'm gonna bend that up. Just, I'm gonna bend that up a half step. Then I'm gonna come down a fret and bend that up a half step. Okay. Uh, in fact, a whole step or a half step works really well there. Okay, whichever you prefer. Okay, both sound really, really good at that point. The main thing to remember here is that you're doing a minor bend and then to a major note bend. So we're really crossing over that minor and major and then resolving back to that root note, okay? So it's, it's actually a super, super simple one. It's just on one string. That's an example of the full bend with the half bend. Sounds really good as well, but you can have a kind of play around with that. Um, you can hear it's almost kind of Peter Green-esque as well, uh, but a really, really nice uh, way to kind of play through those two scales. And then I just added this in the end, because I like this. It's basically just coming down to that 13th fret, hammering onto the 14th fret, which is the minor third to the major third, and grabbing that root note. And again, try and visualize that. So that's the minor third from the minor pentatonic box five to the major third from the box one, and then root notes. So you get. Okay. So there we have it. We kind of got five licks, we've got five positions. And again, with this position, you need to be able to find it across the fretboard. So the way I would do it is a, is a number of ways. I'll show you exactly how I personally would do it, but find your own way through this. I gave you a few examples just a couple of minutes ago. But basically, if I wanted to find this position, I would try to look for this chord by finding the root note on the E string first. So if I was in the key of B, for example, B, B blues, I know there's a B here. So you obviously just mirror that root note like that. Drop that down a tone, and I've got my, my B7 chord. Okay, which is nice. And from there I can attribute my minor, pentatonic, or major, and therefore I can find my lick. Okay. So the last thing to kind of go through here is just how to take it from the point we're at now to being able to comfortably use this. And I touched on it in the last lesson, but basically one thing is use one position at a time. That's gonna be a huge part of this, okay? So get really familiar just in this opening position, okay? So, you know, what, get a kind of track on in, I've got one in D here on the looper, so let's play that. Just a little kind of 12 bar, not 12 bar, just a little shuffle on D, okay? Please use just a, like, kind of like a backing track. Um, again, we'll provide the backing tracks on the website and via the download um, so that you can kind of have a play around with this in various keys. Um, and what you want to be doing is just one position at a time. So I might just, just take this and just do the minor. get comfortable with those boxes overlaid. I've got my cool lick that I learned, um, which is... I can break that into various sections. Okay. Then I can just play around, just try and some sweeter major things. Try and cross them over. One 
you're comfortable with one position, try and move up to the next position and just having a play around with that. Really take your time. Just major. Then hit that minor, so here we can do. That's that pentatonic box two. So, you're playing around with it in various keys, you're just trying to do one position at a time, getting really familiar with it, using this lick as kind of inspiration to then try, try out your own and bring in your own, or certainly any other licks you learn in, in kind of studying blues stuff, try and put in this same kind of framework, as it were. Now the final thing I want to say in terms of learning this is that it's absolutely valid. Even though everything I'm talking about here is very much over that one chord, you can play this concept over the one, four, and five. So over a full 12 bar blues, where you've got the one chord, you know, the four chord, and then you've got the five chord. You know, over the whole thing, okay, you can legitimately play both major and minor pentatonic without worrying about the changes. Okay, now obviously there is room to move with the changes and that's what we're gonna be looking at in the next unit, how BB King specifically moves with the changes and that's a really big unit because he's got a great little system um, that I'm not even sure he's, he realizes he's got. It's just so, so good and so unique to BB King. But, but to, before you get to that, you can just jam over the track no matter what chord, whether you're on the four chord, the five chord, the one chord, the turnaround, using this concept, okay? So just to just speak about that in just one little bit more detail. Let's say you're on uh, doing a, a kind of blues in G, okay? And you're going from the one chord to the four chord. So I'm just gonna just play like this, okay? So one, two. Just keep it simple. Boom. Go to the five chord, four chord, slightly dodgy timing as I've gone through that, but we'll get the gist of it, okay? I'm just going to pause that for a second. Oh, that didn't pause it, that didn't pause it, that paused it. <laughs> I'm just going to pause that for a second. Um, and. Now, in terms of soloing over this, okay, at this point, what I want you to do is just don't worry too much about the changes. Be aware of the changes and listen to what you're playing. So have your ears open whilst you're playing. That's crucial. But in terms of thought pattern, I just want you to think root chord over everything, okay? So, you know, as long as I can find the G, in this instance I'm in G, so if I find a G7 there and I've got my G major pentatonic, and I've got my G minor pentatonic. No matter what chord I'm over, I'm still gonna utilize those two. It's very similar to if I was just in the key of like G minor, I can use G minor pentatonic for every chord change, okay? It's very similar to that, it's the same idea. You do come across a few like iffy bumps and troughs along the way, but this is the blues, man. You can get away with anything you want as long as your ears are open. So this will, this will really give you a massive leap forward into your blues playing, okay? So here's my, way I would do it, okay? So I might just jump up, I wanna jump straight into this, this G here with my major, G major. G major pencil in box four. Okay. So I'm over the five chord, I'm still just thinking that box four. Okay. The chords are changing underneath me, but I'm just staying strong to that. I could blend that up with the minor. Now there is that minor one again, okay, so. And again, I'm over the five chord. Still in that minor. Okay, so 
I'm just being a bit cautious about notes. If I hear a note that's not 100%, then I move away from it. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit of throwing spaghetti against the wall, but it's a really great place to go to start with. And then we can refine as you get used to it. Okay? And then I can do all those crossover licks over any of these chords. So maybe I come up here to that G. Okay, and I might want to do that little crossover. Works fine. Listen to all those changes underneath. So the kind of main thing I'm trying to get across here is don't overcomplicate it by worrying about the changes right now. Okay, you've got time to do that and we'll be looking at that in the next unit. But we have to do things in the right kind of pacing. Okay, so in the previous unit we really worried about the technique, about how he makes the kind of phrasing perfect um, and just generally just how to get a lot out of very little. Now we've brought in a big chunk of blues theory, okay, and loads of positions. So you've got to take that very, very gradually now. You've got to just one position at a time, play it over an entire 12 bar. Just get used to the licks, to these sounds, to crossing over the kind of the basic chord of the key all over the fretboard, no matter what chord you're over. Once you've got that, then we're at a stage where we can refine even further, which is what we're going to do in the next unit. Okay, so thanks again for watching. When you're ready, please do click the link here to go through to the next video in the course, or alternatively start from the beginning of the course with our playlist right here. And please do comment with any feedback or any questions you have. We'll make sure to answer as many of them as we can. I'll see you next time.